Hi, my name is Kevin Smith. I'm the Director of Product Development for Personal Finance Lab. Um, in this video, I'm going to talk about how teachers can successfully use our stock game in their classes to teach a little bit more on, about investing and just personal finance in general. So uh, I'm going to start out with the stock market game basics, how the game actually works and functions. Uh, I'm going to go a little bit through a tutorial of the actual mechanic of placing a trade and conducting research. Then I'm going to bring it back to class discussion and the actual application of how you bring these together in class, both to drive engagement and to make sure the students are learning about investing rather than just kind of blindly trading. And I'm going to finish up with the class uh, game timing, how long it actually takes for your class to do this, and some ideas for some other activities that work along well with this. So first up, the stock game basics. What is a stock game? So your students, when they sign in, are just give, given a bunch of money. Um, most common is $100,000. That's usually configured by the, by the teacher. And they need to invest it. So they can between, choose between stocks, mutual funds, and bonds, uh, maybe some other security types to build a portfolio, balancing their own risk appetite and the reward they're seeking. So it's a pretty straightforward activity. It's just like if the students had their own brokerage account that they needed to start investing on their own. The goals for your class specifically um, is starting out to understand basic investing concepts. What is a stock? What is a bond? What is a mutual fund? Some things like that. The second is understanding how to monitor por a portfolio and place a trade. So what does it mean to have a brokerage account or a retirement account? How can they keep on top of it? Um, when they go to place their trade, what kind of thought should go into that? And the last is a little bit of understanding of how to do basic investing research. Now, you can take these as far as you can, and you will have some students that get really into the game and are really into investing. But at the end of the day, your main goal for as a teacher with your class is not to make it so you have every student in your class is ready to go out and start investing on your own. Uh, most teachers aren't ready to go out and invest on their own. But the goal is to get your students up to the point where when they want to go meet with a financial advisor, they can have an intelligent conversation about what they want to do, what their investing goals might be, and they have you know familiar of the terminology and a familiarity with what actually happens in the market, how news impacts them, how all the economy works together. Um, it's really an activity and interactivity. So to see how this works, I'm going to switch over to the stock game itself. I'm going to show you how to place some trades, conduct some basic research, and monitor the performance of a portfolio. So here I am in my portfolio. This is what a student would see the first time they log in. Um, I don't have anything in my portfolio right now, so the system is giving me a set of stocks that the system is recommending based on what the other students have been trading. Um, so this is always going to show a fresh set of stocks for a student's review. So to make my first trade, I can either pick one of these, or I can go up to the top of the screen here and place and make a trade, which takes me to the trading page. We try to make things pretty easy for students. Um, they can either start type, typing a company name or they can enter the ticker symbol if they know it. It's up to uh, them. So once they enter the ticker and they got have it loaded, it'll show the company logo so they don't have the right one, what the price is, a chart showing its performance. If they scroll down a little bit, we give them a lot of information they can use for some very basic research. Who is this company and what do they do is a very important one. Um, company news is what are news stories that are mentioning this stock. So as the student's game goes on, some of these make a lot more of a difference in what, how they're doing their research, but usually at the start, the student cares mostly about this, an, this um, analyst rating. What is Wall Street saying about this? What do the experts think? Um, there's a lot more stuff available. Price history just kind of goes back to the whenever the company ipo to show you how their price has moved over time. This is exportable, so students can do some research on it. Um, that we do have financial statements, you know, income statements, balance sheet, cash flow statement. You know, for more advanced classes, this makes a much bigger difference. Same thing with detailed quote, things like earnings per share, uh, the beta of the stock. Most of this stuff is for more advanced classes. Most students basically stick to the company profile, company news, and the analyst rating. So when I'm ready to place a trade, I come in here and I place a quantity. The system gives me an, a preview of how much that's going to cost me. I click preview, which shows me how much it will cost when I include my commissions, and I write a note. So this note here is one of the most important parts of personal finance lab stock game. Um, this is why the student is placing this trade. So they can't place a trade unless they write something here. 
So I wrote my note and I press confirm to place my trade. So that's really all there is to it. It's not a complicated process to use personal finance lab to place a trade. Um, when students are coming for the first time, the hardest thing for most students to do is pick what they want their first stocks to be. So to help them with that, if they go under research at the top of the page, we have this trading ideas. So trading ideas has what I just showed you earlier, where it's a rotating list of stocks, companies that students know. They really should start out with a basic buy what you know strategy. What are companies they know about in the real world? What do they think about those companies? They'll click the company, uh, EA Games for example. So let's see how they're doing. It looks like EA Games is doing quite well. Um, and then they would check the analyst rating for this stock and if it looks good then that's probably something they want, might want to add to their portfolio. Once students get a little bit more familiar with investing, which is probably going to be later on in the course, under research there also is a stock screener where they can do things like filter stocks down by um, their uh, industry and all kinds of other stuff is a very complicated mechanism to find you know very refined trading ideas to build a balanced portfolio but really our first goal here is just for students to get their feet wet so don't overthink it just ask students to pick a few stocks that they know um, from their everyday life and put them in their portfolio just evenly balanced out to get started as the class goes on, you're going to work through some exercises to rebalance this based on a lot of the curriculum and lessons that are built right in. So next, once a student has a stock or two in their portfolio, to monitor their performance, they'll come right back to where they came when they signed on, which is called the dashboard, and it's going to list their stocks here. So I'll press the plus sign, I'll get a little bit more information about this company. It looks like they don't issue any dividends, but they do have a pretty high P.E. ratio. Um, See the 52 high, week high and low. There's a lot of information available here, but what most students really care for is a really quick look. So if I click the one day chart, it shows what this stock has done for today. It looks like it's down. Um, if I look at the 30 day, then it's still down, but it's a little, little more even. Other stuff they have available for their portfolio, if they scroll down, this area that says portfolio value chart will show their portfolio value over time. Um, Let's see, I'll look at an older portfolio that I built a few days ago. And I can actually see my portfolio value here. And when I click this button, it actually loads all my portfolio values for previous days. So they can use this information and export it to Excel or whatever uh, resource they want in order to do you know, charts and graphs on it. Um, down here we have my assignment. So these are the extra lessons that students are supposed to be finishing. These are designed to help the students understand what it means to invest. So you don't need to have a huge um, introduction to the stock market before the students to do this uh, program. There's tutorials, there's articles, there's videos, all kinds of stuff built in. At first, the goal really is just getting the feet wet, and then they're going to refine it as they go on. Um, and then uh, some of the other reports they have available. Uh, closed positions is the stocks they sold, so what kind of profit or loss did they get on that. They can review their trading notes. Um, they can see how many dividends and uh, interest they've earned in their account here. So these are some of the least popular pages, but one of the most popular is the rankings page. So the rankings page shows your student's portfolio performance over time compared to everybody else in the class. So students tend to spend quite a lot of time on this page. Um, for the teacher, you can use it too, but for the teacher, one of the most important ones is the weekly rankings, where you can see just who's been trading for the last week and what kind of performance they've gotten over that amount of time. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. But anyway, that's all there is to it. It's not a terribly complicated process. There are a lot of research tools available. So as the students get more and more involved in the stock game, they'll be spending more and more time in the research center and less and less time um, on their portfolio pages or in the rankings if, if things go well. So um, when you're actually starting to use the stock game in your classroom, there's a few things to keep in mind. First, we recommend a cold start. Uh, you don't need to spend a lot of class time talking about investing before the students use a stock game. Um, you don't even really need to talk about investing at all if you don't have time for it in your class uh, outline. 
the whole point of our stocking is that we build in the tutorial videos, we have a lot of lessons integrated in, they're all fairly short and easy to understand, and students can get start kind of cold just on companies they know and they've heard about, and then as they learn more and you cover more topics in class, they'll have those aha moments where things start to make more sense. And it means that they're really building off of what's come before instead of just kind of doing a one-off exercise. Uh, the second reason you would want to start early is that the longer your class has to trade in the stock game, the better, just because that means there's more market news they can react to. They can actually see how the economy is impacting their portfolio, and that makes all the difference. Um, next up is class discussion. The class discussion aspect of the stock game is, it cannot be understated. It's absolutely vital. Um, one easy way is if you as the teacher are actively trading in your class, then the students have somebody to compare against in the rankings, and you can talk about your own portfolio as kind of the class' uh, launch point. Otherwise, the really good way to do it is you take both the student who are at the top and the bottom of those weekly rankings, and you ask them what went well or what went wrong. Um, if you're doing this as a distance learning class, you can do that right in your LMS, where you would post a question to those students and you'd ask them to share a news story talking about their uh, some kind of news story that impacted some stocks they were holding that caused them to go way up or way down. That's the exact kind of research you want students to be able to do and be able to, to pay attention to. And what they get, that gets back to is the class timing. Um, how much time and effort do you need to dedicate of your class or your students in particular to working on the stock game? Generally speaking, your first session in the stock game should take the students about an hour. Um, that first hour is for them to be signing on for the first time, watching a couple of the tutorial videos, which are about five minutes each, and then picking their first three or four stocks to put in their portfolio. So the buy what you know, what you want to have students do is pick a few stocks that they've heard of. In theory, they would have done a little bit of research ahead of time just to pick out a couple companies and know which one have a, um, a good analyst rating is the first kind of key, and then actually build their portfolio and buy them. And then the rest of that time the students can be spending on some of the lessons that are built into the site and some of the other tutorial videos so they understand exactly what they're looking at. So that's all built in. It's already set up for you, so you don't have to worry too much about it. So, so long as you set up the, once your students are registered, you basically have them log in for the first time and, and the system takes it from there. Um, beyond that, in an ideal world, your students would spend about 10 minutes a day looking at their portfolio. Um, that is extremely flexible and just a very rough estimate. Um, normally, we find that this kind of takes care of itself because the students care a lot about their class rankings. And so if nothing else, the students are probably going to be logging in once in a while just to see if their class ranking has gone up or down. It's all real time, so it does move constantly throughout the day. Um, and then beyond that, the 10 minutes is just, did they have any surprises in their portfolio? Did the stocks move up and down quite a bit? If so, take a look at the news stories surrounding that stock and see why. Uh, the more important part is spending 20 minutes per week doing a little bit of extra research. So, do they have the stocks that are best for their portfolio? Should they be rebalancing it to be more diversified? Again, the lessons built into the site um, will take care of this for you. If you have your own lesson plans and stuff you want to use, great, and that will supplement and, and then will be more of a supplement than the star of the show. But the idea here is that as every student will be able to, by the end of the session, have a balanced portfolio and they understand why they put everything in it that they did. Um, they'll see exactly why their portfolio has gone up and down over time. They might not be at the top of the class rankings, but they should have some good idea about what went well or what went wrong. Again, the goal here is to make it so students can have an intelligent conversation about a portfolio, not necessarily be a master investor. Um, you don't want to be encouraging your students to be trading constantly. That's not the goal here. Um, the goal for them should be to taking caref be taking careful notes every time they do make a trade, um, understand how the news and the economy impacts their specific portfolio, and you know be aware of it at a constant basis. And when they do trade, it should be a conscious effort to rebalance their portfolio towards some goal, um, either making it more diversified, or they think something's getting too risky, or they're trying to lock in a reward. Just making sure that it's not just kind of buying just because they're panicking, or buying because uh, they heard a, a news story that they think a stock is going to go up. Just making sure that the whole point of those trading notes is to make it so students are getting some kind of me methodology about how they're act interacting with their portfolio. 
um, and utilize the other lessons and activities in PFINLAB. We have tons, we have a huge library, there's over 300 different lessons built in for personal finance and investing. Um, we have an entire investing 101 course, and the students who get really into the stock game are going to be going through that in their spare time, which is exactly what we always want to see. But you can also use that as part of the investing um, core of your class itself. It's super easy to use, it's just um, a bunch of bite-sized topics organized into 10 chapters with exam at each one. So the stock game itself should take between 20 and 30 minutes at about a minimum each week. And then on top of that, if you have more time to dedicate to the project, you can have the students work through those extra lessons and curriculum. They take about 10 to 15 minutes each. So it's super flexible for your class schedule, but it should work pretty well. And finally, to wrap up the class project, or, uh, yeah, to wrap up your class, you should leave some time at the end for a final project. So the final project is something that you want your students to be keeping in mind throughout the entire uh, portfolio simulation. And the idea is that the students need to build a report that has charts showing their portfolio performance over time. They need to narrate some of the key trading decisions they made. What did they buy and why? They don't need to narrate every single trade with their trading notes, but they should point out kind of the stars of the show. Um, and a little bit of narration about why they did it and what their philosophy was when they were making when they were building the portfolio. Were they chasing returns? Were they going for diversification? What were they trying to do? Uh, it can just be a written report that they turn in, which is fine, but it works also very well if you, have to, if you ask the students to build it as a presentation that they have to give to the rest of the class. Um, they can have it recorded as a video that they post, or they can be actually pre presenting it directly to the rest of the students. And this works super well because the students can be asking each other questions, and that should be part of the grading rubric is what kinds of questions were they asking the other students. So the final project is very important, and it's something that you want the students to be thinking of throughout the game, and this is one of those ones that's really important to make sure that students are thinking about each trade instead of just kind of reacting to the market. So it's not hard to use a stock game. Um, once you have it set up and your students have signed in for the first time, that can be the most you as a teacher have to do with it. You can do so much more, uh, but the whole point of our game in particular is that we make it very flexible for the teacher and how you can integrate it with your class. So if you have any questions, we have a huge lesson plan library too that has a bunch of examples of the curriculum that we have and how it can connect with the stock game and connect with your students as a whole. We have a bunch of class discussion topics. You can find them at content.personalfinancelab slash lesson plans. Um, and if you have any extra um, questions you have for your class, you can always email us. Um, info at Personal Finance Lab goes to our whole team. Nicole goes to our account manager, Nicole, and Kevin goes to me. Or for general student support, we have support at stocktrack.com that goes to our general support team. So we're looking forward to serving your classes, and we're looking forward to hearing back from you soon.